People often ask me, Bill, how'd you get interested in the topic of courage and courage building? Really, it starts out with a profound fear, which I'll tell you about in a moment. I wasn't a great athlete when I was growing up in high school and grade school. I'm not built for football. I'm not tall enough for basketball. I'm a terrible runner even to this day. But one day at the local pool, me and my buddies were jumping around and doing back jumps and back dives. And by myself, by mistake, I pulled my legs back around and I did a back somersault, a back flip. And my friends went, wow. And I went, whoa, I found something that was my own and I could call it my own and I could get good at that they couldn't do. And I became a springboard diver and I got really good at it. I won the Westchester County Diving Championships in Westchester, New York, where I grew up three times. Eventually, colleges started to dangle scholarships in front of me and they'd say, Bill, you're a great low board diver. You're a real one meter specialist. Tell us about your high board list of dives because we got some scholarship money if you've got a high board list of dives. And I didn't have a high board list of dives because I was and am petrified of heights. Now risk taking is the application of courage and it often involves decision making. Will I won't I? Can I can't I? Should I shouldn't I? Get off this platform. So I had a decision to make. Am I going to walk away from another sport or figure out how to work through this fear and maybe be able to capitalize on it and get a scholarship? This is where my coach comes in, a leader in my life named Ford Winter. And Ford would take me down to Iona College in New Rochelle, New York, where to this day, throughout the world, I've never seen another diving board like they have at Iona College because it's built on a hydraulic lift. So he could take that diving board and move it from one meter to one and a half meters. Now my heart is racing. I'm going over on my dives. I'm getting welts on my legs. I'm upset with him for asking me to do this. I'm doing screaming belly whompers. After 100 dives, I get a little bit better at it. After 200 dives, I gain competency. And as I gain competency, I gain confidence. And after 300 dives, I get oh, bored. Boredom's a great clue. If you get bored in your career, it's time to amp things up. If you have direct reports and they start to get bored, it's time to turn up the volume. What do you think Ford Winter did when I got bored at one and a half meters? He moved it to two meters. Now I'm going over on my dives. I'm going screaming belly whoppers, getting welts on my legs, not wanting to go to practice 200, 300. I get used to it through this process of modulating between comfort and discomfort. He'd nudge me out into discomfort, which is what a leader's job is and I would acquire new skills. I would gain competency eventually, and as I did, I would gain confidence. Once I did, it was time to move me back out into discomfort, modulating between comfort and discomfort. Eventually, the kid who started out with a profound fear of heights got a full scholarship to West Virginia University and eventually did this for a living. Let's go to the video. You see, from way up there, it becomes impossible for Bill to differentiate between the glassy-like surface above and the concrete bottom below. The white foam that they'll create will act as a target so that Bill can prepare for impact. As you can well see, our divers made it all the way to the top of that high dive perch, but we're going to give Bill all the time he needs to catch his breath and prepare for this most dangerous dive. Ladies and gentlemen, before Bill does his high dive, when he turns around, let's all get together with a big round of applause to show our support. Our featured high diver from the top of the ladder, he's Bill Treasurer. Now, everyone, silence, please. Let's wait for 
him to come to the surface. And there he is with a beautiful three-position reverse somersault, really whipping the entry, our featured high diver, Bill Fraser. So for seven years, I traveled around the world as a member of the U.S. high diving team, diving from heights that scale to over 100 feet, traveling at speeds in excess of 50 miles an hour before hitting a small pool that was only 10 feet deep. I used to be six foot four, but all the impact made me short like I am today. Consider this, 1,500 dives protected only by a Speedo. I'm wearing it now. Is that too much information? I'm just kidding. But not only did I do those high dives, I also wrote my first book based on that experience, Right Risk, 10 Powerful Principles for Taking Giant Leaps with Your Life. And it's got a picture on the cover of the book of me on fire. Believe me? You don't believe me. All right, then I'm going to have to show you another video. Let's go to the video. Please lit, burning like the pool of Mount St. Helens. You can feel the heat being radiated from your television set. Once again, his insatiable need for fire has been realized. 